Welcome to the Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Passano. Airing live on the United Public Radio Network, 105.3 FM in New Orleans. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Thursday night segment of The Outer Realm. We are broadcasting live right here in the United Public Radio Network and UFO Paranormal Radio Network 105.3 FM from the beautiful city of New Orleans. We are fully sponsored by the amazing people over at Folgers Coffee who have been a part of our journey since the very beginning. So thank you, Folgers. We appreciate you so very much. Also, big thank you to Dr. Snick, the sonic surgeon, a.k.a. Justin Snicker, who's an award-winning composer of Halloween or sci-fi and dark wave along music as a tongue twister for tonight um who basically you can find his music bandcamp spotify itunes amazon anywhere that you can find good music he is the voice behind our intro our outro and he certainly is the music so big thank you to him also big thank you to steve mcginnis who is the artist behind our banners and our imagery basically so find him on instagram find him on facebook look him up He's got fantastic artwork just ready to be had, and custom order is always, always appreciated. So tonight, we welcome back, and I see a lot of people waiting in chat. Um, well, welcome back, the return of Richard Stanley. He's going to be discussing everything H.P. Lovecraft. He's also going to be discussing his film Color Out of Space. So uh, basically, you name it, get your questions and comments ready. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting. We love having Richard coming on to the show. And I like HP Lovecraft. And some, some people do, some people don't. Um, I think it's, it's, it's really interesting. And uh, the connection, I think, to the film is also very interesting. And I, even though I haven't had a chance to, yeah, I know, I haven't had a chance to watch it. <sighs> Yeah, it's it's on Prime. If anyone's interested, <laughs> hi Alex. I was just thinking of you too. Under, yeah, I'm under the weather, so this burritos? is better. For, this is better for everybody right now. Yeah. But, so uh, thinking of burritos and yeah. in your mind. <laughs> <laughs> so we love you, Alex. Yes, we do. Just, yeah. But uh, chat room is God. We've got Alex. We've got Cheval. We've got Dolly. We've got Wayne Tamara. We've got. Let me see. Jim Gerard looking forward to this. Uh, fantastic. So are we. Oh, <laughs> you yeah. know. So, uh, yes, filling up. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. Um, and of course, Alex, there you are. And Jim Mara says, hope you get better, Bubbles. No, oh, thank you. It's the time <laughs> of year. You know, it's just the time of year. And uh, I'm I'm one of those people who, as a child, was sick a lot. And the work that we do it does that, too. And uh, so does you know, any medication and anything like that. So that crap yeah. always happens with me. But yeah. thank you so much for your best wishes. I just figured, you know, it's dark. I had a little bit of bronzer and I'm good. <laughs> I'm hiding in the background. And yes, yes. Not <laughs> too much light because really I'm out. very, very white. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. definitely, I've got a low grade fever right now. So, right. Yeah. No, it's not good. It's okay. It's okay. Um, people just need you all to bear in mind we are working with eight different chat rooms. Um, and it's like a super highway that kind of comes down into one lane here into the soundboard. So um, we also have to keep up with the guests. We can't get too far ahead of him or, you know, when we're asking or putting the questions up. So please do bear with us because there are quite a few messages coming in and we do our very best and we will try to make sure that all comments get put up and all, all questions get addressed. Hello, Michael Kennedy. Hello. This oh, <laughs> is spookies. I love yeah. it. So, <laughs> so the link has been sent one. to Richard. <laughs> Holy crap. Killer, yeah. killer yeah. microphone. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're just waiting on Richard to come in now. 
So uh, link has been sent. So I don't know. Be interesting. He's, he's in the south of France right now. Ooh, we lost bubbles. Let's wait for her to come back. He is in the south of France right now. So he's a real champion because it's probably like 3.20 a.m. there right now. And he's he's coming on to do this live. He's a bit of a night owl. But he also really enjoyed interacting with everybody in chat the last time. So um, I know he'll have, you know, he'll have a really good time because it's really difficult with the pre-records. So I think that both the guests and the people in chat both miss out. So even when we're behind the scenes trying to bring up all of these comments and so on, it makes it really difficult. It's quite the same. So now I've lost my co-host <laughs> waiting for my guest. Woo! Good times. <laughs> um, so, oh, okay, hold on. And bubbles is back. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't want to just try to make all that noise, so I thought it better just... <laughs> Seriously, it just went flying. It's a very heavy uh, mic arm. <laughs> I don't take bubbles out, bubbles down. I'm like, what the actual? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, right, I, have, I have to guess. Hold on. I have said, okay, so I have sent this through to him, so he should have it. Yeah, so he messaged asking for it. There it is. So I guess now we just wait. Tough, technical difficult spookies yes i, I can yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> i know the whole Tyler arm needs. swing at me <laughs> and tyler hey, hey i know it's just it's too it's too too funny i came totally out of like nowhere so. oh my god so i'm you know there's a lot of really good um love crap stuff uh the necronomicon is the one i am the most interested in is i own the book and it's it's one of these things that it doesn't seem to be regulated. You know, like how a lot of authors just seem to have everything's copyrighted. Even after death, the family copyrights everything and you can't really do very much with it. Whereas that didn't seem to be the case with Lovecraft. And you see a lot of people redoing his work and you see his books coming out. Like that book alone, the Necromicon, I can't tell you how many authors have sort of grabbed it and reworded, you know, like... They've just sort of made it their own. There's a lot of different versions of it. But mm -hmm. what I want, you know, really want to touch on with Richard is some people believe this is a real thing, while other people are just like, no, no, no. It was just one of his creations. I need to know. <laughs> this has been manhandled so many times. Oh, no. I just yep. don't know which end is up anymore. <laughs> so. That's my thoughts with the fourth kind, just saying. <laughs> Let's be real. <laughs> the fourth kind. Oh my. Oh God. my gosh. Yeah. If you, it, his, <laughs> Richard's latest film that um, I believe it debuted on Netflix, right, uh, in 2020, which had the highest views for that lockdown period. Oh wow. Um, yeah. Uh, a color out of space. Color out of space. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Nick, Nicholas Cage is in there. And. Right. Yeah. And what, and what did you think about it? I mean, don't, don't give a review. Don't give anything away. I, just, I don't you know. want to give anything away because yeah. I don't want to misinterpret what he he did a right. phenomenal job directing the, the camera as the cinematography. He did a phenomenal job. Right. Um, I, I think once I started watching it and then I paused it and then I researched H.P. Lovecraft a little bit more right. to understand him more. And then the film made sense to me. Oh. Okay. All of a sudden, it was like, oh, 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 because <laughs> you see, you know, the, the, you see it, but I don't want to give it away. But um, yeah, you can watch it. It's on Amazon in Canada right now. So you can watch it on Prime. I would imagine that the US has it as well. Internationally, I don't know. There's a lot of restrictions with the UK, with Amazon and films. They, believe it or not, they have more censorship than Canada does. We thought right. we were it, but, um, yeah, and in some of the strangest things don't even appear, but it's a it's a really good film, and I love Nick Cage. So for me, anything he's in, I watch regardless. But knowing right. Richard, it, it just made it that much more special to watch the film. Are we having issues getting him? I, I am. You know what? I've sent it 
twice now. So I am just going to wait and see. He hasn't responded at all? <clears throat> no, but he requested the link. So I'm just hoping that oh, he so, doesn't have... yeah, he's awake. Yeah. Well, he's awake. <laughs> yeah. I was wondering if he's having a tech issue all the way down there. Like I said, it's, 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 uh, I'm just going to respond to this. Also sent you the link twice. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm on board <laughs> i was um i was pleasantly surprised i i expected it to be a little bit different and then like i said i'm not a big hp lovecraft not a fan not to say not a fan because i really didn't know that i knew him right you know like it's one of those things that's always been in the background of your life but you just didn't really know about it right. um and i you didn't realize it and then when i started watching a little bit more and i watched the um where they're telling about his characters mm -hmm. then the film just makes a lot more sense right right for right. me but that's right. my perspective no, yeah okay. I'm if also... you're into sci-fi you'll love it that's that's all i can say me sci-fi I... I have to i have to dig <laughs> and right. research but right. um if you enjoy sci-fi you will love the movie color out of space I'm going to send this on Facebook. With Nicholas Cage. There. I'm just sending you, it on Facebook. And then Facebook. you can see, I saw and, and I, talk, I chatted with him in the chat room on the Outer Realm. This is so cool. I'm watching his movie now. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is really cool. One of the cool. perks of being here tonight. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so. I love I love sci-fi. Um, you know, of course, here we've got, you know, the writers and illustrators of the future and um, mm -hmm. um, Ron, L. Ron Hubbard, and he's got, a lot of stuff and they've they've sent over um a couple of different stories for us to listen to yes when we were guests on you know on their show on john goodwin's show that's right we were on that yeah. we were and and i thought it was really well done be, like totally different than lovecraft sort of stuff it was just like really sort of futuristic and sort of like a mind ninja thing because <laughs> i started i'm sort of reading it like, hmm, now i have to go through it quick this film is Playing with your mind. Psychological thriller. This movie like that plays, sort of thing. Yeah. this film plays with your mind. Right. You think it's one thing and then you find out something else. And then right. you never, that's why you can't even spoil it for anyone because you never understand it till right. you understand it. Right, right. You know. Hmm. Well, I'm good I don't at keeping know. stuff to myself when it comes to films because I hate when people spoil them for me. But right. I can tell you, no one can spoil this film for you. You will not see any of it coming. No, oh, okay. Well, that might be definitely worth, um, no. you know, taking some time. And uh, like I said, I, I'm, I'm just, I love a lot of um, Lovecraft stuff. So, and there's just so much of it. Stuff like I, this is something I never knew was was a Lovecraft thing. And yeah, until I, you said, oh yeah, there's this connection. I'm like what? I really? and you'll under because you love Lovecraft. As soon as you'll see it, you'll see it a lot sooner than I did. Right. So right. yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I really dig Lovecraft. I mean, again, and I think it's just because I've got friends who are into it. You know, one of my son, yeah, my Alex Lovecraft. Alex needs really. to watch the film. Yeah, there you watch go. Watch the film with Lisa. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah yeah. So, but again, you know, there's 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 so much controversy around him as well, and it's almost as though, you know, you just didn't hear much about it until. Till he was just gone, until he passed away. Then it's like all of a sudden, it's like every great artist, you know, everything comes out to the forefront and like you get famous yeah. when you when you pass away. But I just find it interesting that nobody ever did much to copyright um his stuff, like uh, like to redo some of these things almost without limitation. They've used me. yeah, but they've used his concepts in films in Hollywood. Because oh, yeah. I now that I know looking back, I see them all, you right. know, it, where I didn't know. And they're not necessarily sci-fi. Some of them are thrillers. Some of them are, are horrors. Um, but to, to see Richard Stanley's hand on the direction of the film was what was most impressive for me. Right. The, the motion that he created mm -hmm. with the direction was just really, really good. I look at stuff like that. Maybe because my brother-in-law is an actor. I don't know. I have to watch a lot of stuff and he talks a lot about technical things and it was a joy to see someone that I have, you know, spoken to on air with right. do such an incredible production. All right, I'm going to try this a different way. 
<laughs> the Mouth of Madness is a Lovecraft. Sh ah, see, themed movie, In the Mouth of Madness. Yeah. So there we go. Stanley. Isn't there a oh, film Stanley. about him too? Wasn't there one H.P. Lovecraft? I can't remember. There's a documentary on YouTube about him, and right. they talk about all his works. And the funny thing is, um, Kithulu. Which one's that Cthulhu. one? Cthulhu. 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 Actually, only, Cthulhu. only had twelve people that have read it by the time he passed away. It was, and it's one of his biggest, and it's just shocking. Cthulhu. Wow. I couldn't, I really? couldn't see the word in front of my head there. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Well, that... When you see it, you know, much like Oscar Wilde, they became bigger later, and yeah. Van Gogh, and right, well, <laughs> every always, great artist before them. It's always the way, for sure. Especially you know? back in those days, you know, people are like, "Wow, you know, the Renaissance created so many poets and artists." I said, "Well." Yeah, but if people weren't so technical right now, we'd probably have poets and artists again. It's right. it's they're using a different medium and you have to find it and it's just a different time. But right. in the time it was paints. Right. And yeah, was there a lot of greats? Yes. Was there a high population like today? Right. There we go. Here's another one. Dreamcatcher was influenced yeah, by we'll Lovecraft. Thank you for that. Up. Yeah. Yeah. I don't That's know. That's the I... one, the name I was looking for. Again, yeah. there's there's so much, you know, when you yes. when you start digging into Lovecraft, you start realizing like he was really racist. Like, oh, really my racist. Gosh. And I'm I mean, not going to say what he said. No, no, but I, I'm you know. not going to say what he said, but you look it up on YouTube and okay. you hear it, you can't unhear it. No. And it, it, if you're a big fan of his, you might not want to listen to that. Well, maybe there's a reason that never he never really took off when you know in his living years because he was just so outspoken. But it, but many people around him were. It wasn't a sign of the times. You know what yes, I mean? Yes, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. Yes, right. And I, you know, we were talking about how his mother came from a family that was highly inbred multiple right. generations really and i feel and his father passed away of cancer and then he eventually died of cancer but never sought treatment no. he just lived in agony and like a, a recluse which was very common for that time as well well he Artists moved into his reclusive. family's estate i think on his mom's side or something oh very well to do something you know big mansion and and a lot of you know played yes. on his fears and things like that which was he sort was, of instrumental in him coming forward to you know, all of these amazing Well, creations. he was raised by his aunts because his parents had passed away. Yeah. Right, right. I just, I just was really shocked at when they said the tumors inside of him were multiple, multiple, and he lived in agony the rest of his life, but mm -hmm. reclusive, which well, ate expired I said, foods, you know, so, just like, just like, God. Well, it wouldn't know. matter at that point. <laughs> no, I guess not, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, there we have. Very bizarre. Point. Very yeah. bizarre. But, you know, I think with all the greats, the reason why they are great is not just because of their work, but because of the story that comes with their death as well in their later years. You yeah, know, like how they lived. Yeah. Look not at how they, how um, they what's they his died, name? How they lived. That, oh, my God. Yeah. I don't from know. From the airplane. From the airplane. Hugh, what's his name? I was going to say half of that. No, I was going to too. But that's a different. That's a different company that was that house sold for over four million. But anyways, I don't um, know. what's the first Hugh that comes to your mind? I don't know after. No, the other one. Howard Hughes. The multi Hughes. Howard Hughes. I know. That's I know. why I got it the wrong way. Um, he was the same kind of messed up. Thank you, Michael. Yes, I had the Q, but I didn't have the Howard. Thank you. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna blame it on the under the weather thing. Um, oh, it's the medication that works. <laughs> I, do, I always, but I always confuse his name, and I it takes me a minute. Right. I mean, I watched Aviator, and I thought that was an incredible movie on his life, you know. Mm -hmm. And Leonardo DiCaprio just slayed that. But mm -hmm. I, again, recluse and and just let themselves go. I feel like this is just part of being genius and mm -hmm. and creative sometimes when they're misunderstood. And right. the times were not ready for H.P. Lovecraft's mind at you all. Know, 
I, I don't, I think mm, you're not wrong on that. You know, like he, he was definitely, <clears throat> I mean, he, he, what did, what he died? Like 19, what was it? Like 37 or around there? 47. I don't, I don't, I don't even remember. Um, but he was just very, um, like he, he, you know, you get people who are just so eccentric that they just don't really care. <laughs> That's why they're eccentric. They say, yeah, like, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Because they really I, don't care. But, but, yeah. but when you're in, a, you know, when you're in a position of of like I always say, you know, after you've been in the public eye, um, you you just start looking at things differently. I always say, govern. You have to. We have to govern oneself accordingly. You know, you just don't want to be like, I wouldn't want to be running people off the road, <laughs> just, you know, no. being really belligerent and, and being, you know, you have to, you have to take uh, into consideration integrity. And it just seems like we lived through a time where there was, like, if there was integrity, it certainly was selective. It, it was different. They lived through a lot of wars too, world wars, when sure. you were talking about yeah. 1930s 1940s you've gone through two world wars and a cold war right. that's right insane right. you know um yeah. but i don't know what that does to people i hope i never find out um no, for sure i mean yeah we've lived we every every generation lives through something you know but what people in chat maybe chime in what's everybody's i mean obviously there's a lot of people in here who are you know you're either a richard stanley fan or you're a Lovecraft fan. So why don't you chime in with your favorites? I have to say for me, I love Cthulhu, but I really like the uh, Necronicon. I really, really, really dig the that. The what? <laughs> what would you say? <laughs> <laughs> then I'll sound it out for you. The Necronomicon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That was the big one. That was yes. the big one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Is that the... Yeah. Dolly's actually coming on. Yeah. Well, yeah, Cthulhu's like the... The big like Cthulhu is the big octopus head. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, Dolly is coming on. She's coming on in January, Michael. Q and A. Yep, she's gonna you be doing a Q and A. Start writing up your questions. Exactly. <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, that's again. I think it's just because there's so much mystery around that one. I love it. You know, I know people who just totally love like Cthulhu. I ended up having. My son loved him, my youngest son. And I went and asked uh, Eric Werner, uh, who was a friend of mine. And he, you know, really great artist. He did a lot of commission pieces for me. And one was Cthulhu. It was yeah. probably the first one I ever got for him. And wow. uh, I know it was just really, really well Sad done. Sad to think only 12 people read it by the time he died. <laughs> there we go, Alex. So, Alex, what's what's your take on it? What's, you know, because some people figure it's one of his best works of fiction. And it's been touched on so much that now people are starting to wonder, was it fiction at all? What's your what's your take on it? Not put up other names. Ulfar, yeah, that's a good one too. There we go. Over in his mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, it's 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 a hard one to um it's a hard one. He's got a lot of really good ones. You know. I mean, there's yeah. some out there like I, said, I never would have guessed Color Out of Space was based on any of Lovecraft stuff. You see this one, you'll know it right away. Um, have I ever heard of this book? Sorry. Uh, no, I have not. Sorry, I totally did not even see this comment. Should I Should I look this up? All has read by Donald Tyson. Yeah, I'll, huh. I'll write it down. What's it about? Yeah. Feel free to elaborate, no <laughs> Alex. Kidding. It sounds like it sounds like a good tease. Why don't you just <laughs> enlighten us? Yes. And we'll put it up here and we'll share it up. Wow, I wonder if they're having trouble overseas with um, well, internet. I mean, it's 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 you know, three thirty eight in the morning over there. But he just messaged yeah, me. Yeah, but he messaged you so we know he's awake. He's just yeah. probably having trouble with his internet. They just messaged me. Yeah, this is bloody crazy. So I, I know. don't know. I don't know. We may just be turning this into a full-on Q&A at this rate. My God. No kidding. It was barely mentioned in his writings, mostly alluded to. Ah, that's why. Because I watched a lot of videos on him today. Um, that's what I like to do when I'm under the weather and I'm just kind of stuck in bed. I love watching YouTube. But, like, I need I need nonfiction. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yes, I know, documentary I know, I know. style stuff because I will just fall asleep. 
So um, um, obviously I did not know this. I need to delve a little like major, majorly oh, deeper into this nice. book. Of course, to show you how many books I have. That created. I have like skimmed through this one. I love it. But again, I have different versions of it also. There's and my daughter I snagged it, so I'm just kind of like, no, uh, and you guys that. are all into that. Yeah, absolutely. That's good. Yeah. yeah. My That's kid reads thing. like the, all these self-help and business books. I don't, I don't exactly borrow books from her. <laughs> but, oh, uh, yeah. See. Yeah. Oh, great. That's just great. <laughs> we had a big. Oh, nice. Sammy. That would you, Jolly, so when that much. happens, Yay. can you just give us a heads up in the morning? I know, I know. You know Thank what? You. Honestly, that's that's just dandy. It would explain a lot of things for today, though. Did oh my care? god! Wow, I really I do look, look dark on screen. I just looked because I, I was looking. Out. Thank you, Alex. I will check that out. Uh, Tamara, unfortunately, I'm going to have to reread as the older I get, the more I forget. I know, right? Okay. I know. Read it like it's a new read. I love it. <laughs> there's there's an entire um, film on YouTube called The Complete Cthulhu Mythos, and it's 22 hours long. <laughs> so it just God. dives into all of it, right? Oh, yeah. And um, there was another one that I love. There's a, there's a 27 minute, just an HP Lovecraft special for Halloween, which was really, really good for someone who's a beginner. You know, and then the a Titan of Terror was a bio uh, biographic on him, right. which in 21 minutes you get the gist of everything. I watched a right. lot of them today, just saying. But yeah. um, bits yeah. and pieces here and there, just to learn more. I was just a little surprised by his mother's side of the family, but then not so much because of the times. Right. I mean, that stuff still happens now, right? So, really. Now I'm gonna go and. Just leave that for right now because that scrolling is driving me crazy. I've never yeah, had to concentrate yeah. on except for bubbles. <laughs> it's just right across from me. <laughs> so, sorry, it is can, when you have it on a bigger screen, it's even more. Can you explain um, an M class CME for those who don't know? Because if any of people were experiencing weirdness today, you know, just everything going wrong and electronics just being, you know, sort of uh, iffy, it was kind of a blend of everything for me today. And other people I know who were messaging and saying, you know, is it just us or is, is today just completely messed up? And, uh, you know, people were asking, can you check me? <laughs> it's like, why? Just had a kind of a day because uh, that kind of a day does happen naturally. I know. <laughs> so, it's, you know, like, sorry, It's man. tough because it's, it's yeah, it. it's tough. Always on it. Yeah, she is. <laughs> no, yes, she is. So I just brought up a little bit of Lovecraft stuff while we're waiting. Um, so it says here, he spent much of his time writing and as a child prodigy, continued scribbling until his death diary, which is something he left behind, a mountain of work. He wrote hundreds of poems, scores of essays, and of course, um, his most famous beginning was, quote, the oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is fear of the unknown. And that's in a article from the Atlantic.com if anybody wants to go and check it out. Um, so he's got like all kinds, all kinds of links in here. Like you can go in and, uh, you know, check out all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. You know, so a few years after he died, the New Yorker critic Edmund Wilson wrote bluntly, Lovecraft was not a good writer. <laughs> the only real horror of most of these fictions is a horror of bad art or bad taste. Oh, that would be really harsh. You know, like, I mean, he, the guy still lives on today. <laughs> so I don't know, man. Say what you want, but he's still... He's still kicking. He's got a really big. There's there's a cult following for him, definitely. Oh, yeah. I I wonder what he would think of all this if he was here today. I think he'd be quite pleased with himself. Cre created Donald Tyson created the Cthulhu tarot cards. <laughs> Why do I think there's that would Cthulhu just be awesome. tarot cards? <laughs> yeah, I don't do tarot, so like I'm not familiar with. No, but any anybody who anybody who who uh, who digs Lovecraft would probably get right into something like that. That would be that's a lot of imagery. Wow. That would I'm be gonna start cool. learning how to draw. 
I know, right? No stick figures allowed, <laughs> Bubbles. <laughs> That's just it. We'll be working. She says, okay, hey, I'm going to draw you a picture. And I'm yeah, just like, yeah. oh. Oh, you should see my crime scene. For, you should see my crime scene drawings. For worse. But oh, it, it comes with a big it. explanation. <laughs> <laughs> you know that little curly thing that looks like Charlie Brown's squiggly hair? That's Hello. this. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Steve. No, I, I don't know. I, I, I would love something like that, you know, again, you know, but again, like I like Lovecraft. So I have friends Alex who Hassan. just, okay, you really, can show me when I see you. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just going to see here. I think I pulled up another article on him. Hold on. Um, this one was on the, the Necronomicon originated as if it says right here, it originated as a fictional book in the works of H.P. Lovecraft and grew into an extended literary in-joke as other horror writers organically added to the Cthulhu mythos, like what mm. you were talking about. Um, see, this is crazy. So according to Lovecraft, it was written by, okay, this is what Alex said right here. It was written by Abdul Alhaz, Alhazred, a mad Arab poet of the Yaman in 950 AD. So I don't know. I'm parked in the studio. No, you're not. <laughs> I can assure you I followed your link. Uh, no. They, okay. You, here we go. We just came in. <laughs> wow. Oh. You just now came in. <laughs> we looking at, bed earlier today. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, you didn't. You didn't come on this soundboard <laughs> till just. I know. I followed the link you sent me, so I've been in a little. Um, well, yeah. Um, HP. HP knows. HP knows. He came back. He shoved you over. <laughs> <laughs> Watched your film today, Richard. Fantastic. Oh, I'm yeah, glad you liked it, and yeah, yeah. it's a pleasure being back and to be out of that um, strange um, cyber eddy that I was stuck in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, well, apparently, according to to Dolly in chat room, she says it was an M class CME today, which sort of you know messes up everything, all the electronics, all of everything. Yeah, so we've been in the soundboard yeah. here for like since nine o'clock and just getting things ready. And I sent the same link to Amelia. She came right in twice. And yeah, you've just been <laughs> lost in cyberspace somewhere. <laughs> It must be yeah. the topic of conversation or something. So, but it's welcome. Good. You, well, you it's good to be it. on the show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, We've been um, keeping your seat warm. <laughs> so, trying yeah. to talk, you know, this whole love crap thing. It's just some people love them, some people hate them. It's just they're just not, it's not their thing, you know. But I don't know. It certainly is an my understanding. Thing. I think it's an understanding of him because I said that I started watching your film. It's actually on Amazon in Canada right now. And I started watching the film and then I paused it and I went to research a little bit about more about HP Lovecraft. Then I came back and went, oh, and it was a whole different experience. Oh, so you glad to hear that. Yeah. So where, where it's fantastically do want, done. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to start? Do you want to talk with, you know, let's talk Lovecraft, what it was all about, and and just sort of work our way into how you ended up coming up with the film. So we'll start from the beginning, and we have lots of time. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah, it's the, the middle of the night here in the French Pyrenees, and beginning yeah. of December, it's our first world is... winter out there. It's super yes. dark and um, kind of appropriate for the subject matter. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's just dark and cold here. <laughs> Nothing exciting. It's freezing <laughs> here. Pyrenees. It's freezing. <laughs> so, I know. Okay, excellent. So why don't you tell us about um, H.P. Lovecraft as um, for anybody who hasn't heard of him or people who are just sort of um, coming into him because he's more famous now, of course, than, than he was even when he was alive, like most amazing artists. So Yeah, and no, he was... Um completely insignificant during his own lifetime and I think um, lived a life of um, total um, seclusion and kind of appalling poverty. Um, right. Had very little to eat by the end and um, was dead by the time he was 47 years old. 
um, the, um, saw very little of his work um, actually find its way into publication in his lifetime. I think right. um, none of it was published in, um, yeah, in hardback form um, during his life. No. Uh, stories yeah. only a yeah, pulp magazines and um, a lot of the better stuff was yeah, never published at all. So yeah. Um, he had yeah, probably no no conception of what would happen after his death. What what do you think he would? How do you think he would feel? Be if he was here right now today to see all of this. I, I think a combination of very of amusement and horror. Yeah. which is pretty um, appropriate for Lovecraft. I would imagine he would be um, highly amused by some of the things that have happened and um, utterly appalled by. The <laughs> interpretation, like that, yes. Yeah, this is yeah. awesome. Amused, That's... happy that everybody knows who he is, but yet a little upset because of mm. the interpretation sometimes, mm -hmm. maybe, because he was so, you know, it was his and his only kind of thing. Well, well it's, just, it's one so far, and it, it, one of the things that he did, um, which was really, um, I think, a, a incredibly far ahead of the game, and um, far ahead of of yeah. anything that we um, are able to um, fully understand right now, is that he he created a um, a shared universe that um, exists completely outside of um, of copyright control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. During his lifetime, he encouraged other writers to um, use um, his, his his pantheon, different gods and different tropes like the um, the Necronomicon, and um, yeah, uh, encouraged other folk to add on to the mythology, and mm -hmm. thus created a um, uh, something which um, was its own um, shared fictional universe that um, could keep expanding that the um, the reader or the audience were really able to add to. Mm -hmm. uh, in the present day, people are only just getting used to the idea of, yeah, the Marvelverse or, um, yeah, um, Walt Disney of um, a, a brand or which creates its own shared universe or which has multiple films, um, television series and different um, products tied into it. But Lovecraft kind of created a, um, a universe that exists entirely outside of um, corporate control right. that um, is self-perpetuating. Right. And um, from the time it was introduced into... Um, through the pulp magazines and his initial stories into our culture, mm -hmm. about a hundred years has passed. And mm -hmm. in the course of that century, um, a lot of those ideas have um, reproduced themselves extremely successfully to the point that they've um, pretty much permeated the, the whole of, um, of human culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, kids um, in um, Africa, in the French Pyrenees, in Russia, in, in, in Japan, can all identify Cthulhu. Um, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. He can't, there's a lot of wow. things they can't identify, but they can identify Cthulhu. I love that. What, I mean, what makes somebody, um, you know, I mean, he's pretty much like some, you know, some people just like, oh no, the New York after he passed away, like, oh, he wasn't a good writer at all. I don't know, man, the guy's still kicking, he's got staying power. But um, what do you think contributed to him going down this specific path? Because he's he was really out there, but and he was also really controversial. You know, he was just like extremely, I mean, extremely racist for one but it was a you know a sign of the times right i mean we were talking about that earlier might be a reason though why he didn't make it too far in life because i think you were just coming into um that hole where that wasn't cool you know here in the u.s they were just like no no this is you had the south behaving one way you had the north behaving another way but around the world it was it was it was quite different but what do you think contributed in his life to follow down the path that he did to write all this really obscure stuff well i mean i think he didn't have any choice from the <laughs> point of view that he was facing a, a series of um unfortunate circumstances and um i think because of the way he was brought up he was naturally extremely reclusive and right, um, right. cut off from the mainstream of human life 
Uh, right. Because some people uh, thought, oh, he was just mad, you know, and yeah, other people were like, no, he was brilliant. Towards the latter part of his life, I, I know he only went out at night and um, couldn't handle even going out in the daytime. Mm. And he, even when he was a, a child and a younger man, had a, a very difficult time um, talking to to other children or um, yeah, striking up um, yeah interpersonal relationships. It was only when he started um, corresponding with different um, amateur periodicals that he really started to yeah. make friends or reach out to other people. Right. And um, as such, I think he followed a, his own strange path, um, taking off from Edgar Allan Poe and the Arabian right. Nights and um, decadent romantic fiction and was um, pr um, pretty much unaware or uninterested in the, the modern American novel and the way that um, mainstream culture was um, going at the time. Well, there are so many big names, writers and poets from, from that coast, the East Coast at the time as well. Mm. They're huge. Right. To, to think that they were all friends at one time or sitting at a bar, that's how I envision them. Mm. And you know, coming back to another point there is that um, I also think um, it, it's really easy to... Um, I guess misinterpret these folk and to reinvent them in our own image mm -hmm. and to impose onto them um, the standards of, of, of our present day because I think um, the more I've looked into it and uh, because of um, current circumstances with um, cancel culture and everything else, I've been forced uh -huh. to uh, look into it very, very, very closely. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that um, H.P. Lovecraft has been um, rather viciously misrepresented on a, a lot of fronts because really? uh, yes. a lot of the things which I am reading on the internet about him are simply not true and, um, yeah, massively um, exaggerated. That's um, really sad. Yeah, I mean, the a number of different ways and reinterpreted them. And um, when you actually try and zoom into the factual basis for these claims, mm -hmm. it's a whole lot shakier than um, people make it out to be. Right. Like, uh, to give you a, um, a, a glowing a, a prime example of this, what I'm seeing is in the present day is a lot of folk are... Um, attacking people for um, selling um, Lovecraft merch or um, Lovecraftiana or writing to um, outlets that are selling mm -hmm. Lovecraft books and saying, are you prepared to um, cancel this author because um, his, his um, books are full of the N-word to um, yeah. direct quote some of the things I've read, <laughs> which right. caused me to zoom in to that detail. I thought, yeah, really? Um, it? Um, it turns out that um, the only um, use of the N-word in um, Lovecraft's fiction is um, in a story called The Rats in the Walls. Mm -hmm. uh, in The Rats in the Walls, it's the name of the cat. Um, mm. N-Man is the name of the, um, the black cat in The Rats in the Walls that um, defends the narrator oh, against, the, against yeah. the rats. Right. Um, which is the only usage of the N word that I've actually can locate in in anything of that um, of Lovecraft's published fiction. Right. Um, um, then zooming into that further, it turns out that um, this was the name of um, his childhood cat. He was given the cat when he was four years old. Right. Um, he lost the cat ten years later when he was fourteen. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, it's the only pet he ever had. Uh, mm -hmm. um, clearly, when he writes about, um, yeah, um, this awkwardly named cat, um, N Man, mm -hmm. it's, yes. it's yes. pretty much the um, the thing he loved most in life. Oh, uh, he, never, he never owned another cat, he, uh, and um, for years mm -hmm. afterwards, um, writes lovingly of um, his childhood companion. Right. And obviously, when he wrote Rats in the Walls, he put the cat into the story to defend the guy against the rats because it's his, it's his beloved childhood companion. Right. Uh, given that he was given the cat when he was four years old. Right. Uh, I've got a question whether he would he, he, he even named the cat <laughs> and whether we should be um, attacking people in the present day and um, mm. 
for historical fiction <laughs> or nonfiction. The name, it's, the name of a four-year-old boy's cat from the late 19th century. For mm -hmm. anything, though, for anything that was written then, you have to look at the vernacular. You have to look at the times. It, it's mm -hmm. it's a bit ridiculous. I'm I'm not. Oh, you, I want to be very careful. <laughs> yeah, well, it has to be. It's sad, yeah. but I, I don't it think is. it's sad. Yeah. Was Again, it? sign of the times. Yeah. Right? yeah. So um, I do have a question for you. Uh, here. Mary, yes, you get Alex Rondini, who's a friend of ours, is asking, didn't Lovecraft basically write about his nightmares or an interpretation of his nightmares? Um, he certainly did. And um, he kept a dream diary and um, wrote um, very elaborate accounts of um, some of his dreams, were, um, several of which um, were posthumously published as short stories when after he, he was dead, he became more popular. Um, people literally clipped out some of the descriptions of dreams that he'd written to friends and people at the time or recorded in his dream diary and published them as stories. So right. some are um, yeah, straight up accounts of dreams and um, a lot of the um, more potent material, um, such as the, um, the Necronomicon, the, um, the black book of ancient lore that's at the center of most of these stories, comes directly from, um, from Lovecraft's dreams. Hmm. God, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. But I mean, genius. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that you you would, that would also... to, yeah add to that is that Lovecraft often blamed his dreams on indigestion. Sometimes, <laughs> and starts yeah. as, um, indigestion again last night exclamation mark and then he Ooh. launches into an account of the uh, of the dream and um, yeah and he had cancer. Yeah, he died so, of stomach cancer when he was 47. So he, 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 this is probably linked to the indigestion. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah. Begs the question as to whether the cancer caused the dreams or whether the, the dreams caused the cancer. Hmm. Well said. Well said. Yeah, yeah. So what are your thoughts? Was he a prophet of sorts? Um. Well, one of the weirdest things about the man, uh, and one of the reasons why I think his work's coming into under greater scrutiny in the, our present era, is that frequently he's um, describing things which um, didn't exist in in his lifetime or in his period, things we, we didn't have names for, oh. or um, concepts that ha hadn't fully been defined. I mean, I guess, at a pinch, a good example is the way that the alien architecture in um, Call of Cthulhu and other stories is described as um, being um, non-Euclidean architecture and non-Euclidean geometry. And mm. um, I recall as a, um, a precocious, um, creepy kid at school um, at reading Lovecraft, I used the phrase non-Euclidean <laughs> in an essay. Uh, uh, and I mean, this must have been around 1978 or somewhere. Uh, mm. it's, uh, it came back with a big red ring around it on the paper for the teacher saying there is no such thing. Uh, um, at that point in time, um, uh, according to my school teachers, all geometry was Euclidean. Um, this concept of non-Euclidean geometry was complete rubbish. Whereas mm. um, what we have now is... Um, we are now aware of chaos science and fractal geometry. Um, yes. In fact, we use fractals to um, create the, the very VFX that we use to, um, to create color out of space. Um, Non-Euclidean geometry is definitely a thing. Mm. Uh, and um, fractal geometry um, and the whole concept of, um, of I guess, um, the patterns within chaos that we see in chaos science um, bears Lovecraft out. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, more, uh, more food for thought always leaves more questions. I mean, if you look at everything that we're like the current state of our world right now, it would seem that a lot of what he put out there, you know, is coming around full circle. It was very relevant, I guess you could say. Um, I'm going to jump ahead again. Cosmic horror. What is cosmic horror? I guess um, 
it, it, it's the phrase which we can use to probably describe Lovecraft's genre, which is, rather than gothic horror, it's kind of leapt into a world where uh, we're dealing almost with the, the, the horror of the sheer the sheer scale of, of creation, of the sheer size of the universe, uh, the sheer depth of time, right. uh, a world in which humanity mm -hmm. is, um, is insignificant and where hu human emotions and um, human needs are essentially irrelevant. Um, in, in a lot of um, Lovecraft's fiction, he's got very little interest in characters. Um, his char he's, he's got basically it's throwaway um, two-dimensional human characters in his stories. He knew nothing about humans and didn't really want to write about them. The stories, however, are, are not throwaway stories. It is more interested in the, yeah, evoking the um, the true nature of the universe, according to to Lovecraft. Um, in that universe, humanity is uh, is are insects or weed or or bacteria. Um, mm. I think what most people mistake for his racism is kind of a, an aspect of his cosmic anti-humanism. Uh, I think he's pretty down on on the entire human race. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> I'd say so. And you know what? Yeah, that, that would definitely attribute to some of what people think about him or thought about him even now. It's really hard to get anything... Um, like to pinpoint anything on him because there were so many different views on him. Like I said, you people either loved him or they hated him, you know, mm -hmm. one way or another. Um, one of my favorite, um, I guess, Lovecraft is probably uh, the Necronomicon. And there's a lot, there's a lot of people who believe this was actually a real thing. And then you have others like, no, no, it's just like, it's one of his amazing creations. You know, and other people are just like, no, 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 this is this is a real thing. So what can you tell us about that? Because that one is still going strong. I mean, and again, because of the lack of copyright, it's just been changed. It's been added to it's, you know, it's, it's just been altered so much. It's just like, what is the original? Well, I, 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 I kind of believe Lovecraft from the point of view that Lovecraft claims he saw it in a dream. Uh, he dreamed the title of the book, and there's any number of folk who will tell you that the true Necronomicon came from elsewhere, but Lovecraft yes. doesn't say that he dreamed it. Uh, right. he, saw, he saw the name of the book first, and since then, I mean, in the dream first. But since then, um, it's gone on to probably be, um, along with Cthulhu, the most recognizable Lovecraftian trope or archetype, which is spread right across our planet. Right. Um, um, people all over this world have heard of the Necronomicon. Very few of them um, know that it was invented by H.P. Lovecraft. This it, is true. It successfully jumped into so many different forms, um, mm -hmm. so, say the, uh, its appearance in the Evil Dead movies and, um, yes. and elsewhere. That, that um, scared the okay. crap out of me when <laughs> I first uh, came out. I was very uneasy about that, you know, because I, I lived in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, so I had a different perspective as to wanting to live in the woods at that time. But definitely, you know, not frightening. It's just one of those thriller things that just really made you think. And you're right. You know, I think well, back yeah, to the book. Yeah, little animated history of the Necronomic at the beginning of Evil Dead 2 kind of um, <laughs> something like that. But, it, but um, it left its mark. It left its yeah. mark. <laughs> so a lot of folk believe the book is real. Um, um, one of the um, things that's kind of dangerous or spiky about the whole Lovecraft canon, about the whole of the mythos, is that um, if if enough people believe in something, mm -hmm. um, it kind of um, becomes true. Like the Telka effect. Becomes, yeah, it, right? it, it, there's, a, there, there, there's the genuine danger that if enough people believe in it, um, yes. somehow life. into existence. Right. That, um, even if it started off as a fictional universe a hundred years ago, if enough people around the planet start to believe in Great Cthulhu and start to believe in the Necronomicon, um, the damn thing might almost have the opportunity to uh, slip across the, the boundary and yes. pop their life existence. 
It's happened. I mean, look at Slender Man. It's a tulpa. It's just created online by people who believed it and gave it characteristics and gave it personality. And, you know, um, it, and that's what Slender Man is. It's a tulpa. And it sounds a lot like that's what you're, yeah. you're one describing. Kid, one kid in university on his laptop. There you go. And it <laughs> so, almost killed people. Yes. Um, yeah. Alex also asking, has Richard ever heard about Donald Tyson's book, all oh, has read. read. Yeah. Um, no, I haven't. Oh, wow. Okay, Alex, do some enlightening. Again, we were talking about that before. This was uh, based on the character. Am I am I saying that, explaining that properly? Um, hold on. Here we go. Yeah. So I'll put this up. Abdul has read the, the allegedly fictional author of the Necronomicon. Yeah, from where it was, like 950 AD, something. Yeah, that's right. Or, yeah, allegedly wrote the book in ancient Damascus before um, finally being devoured by um, ultra-dimensional demons in a crowded marketplace somewhere. <laughs> I just love it. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. I just know. I just googled Donald Tyson. Holy crap! Share with the class. There's only like you know, well, class. Many people listening. <laughs> <laughs> a teacher I've never seen myself as, but um, right. Yeah, um, the fourth book of occult philosophy, Decromnicon, mm -hmm. is on there. Uh, there's a demonology book. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, he's got three books of occult, and then that fourth one that I've got here. Mm -hmm. Wow, making yeah. use of magic mirror. Okay, I'm done. Use a cat it's, it's, there's tons. Brilliant. There's tons of stuff to do with the darkness, dark magic, witchcraft. There's a lot. Mm-hmm. There's a lot here. Wow, who knew? Thanks, Alex. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, um, how Al has read became the mad Arab and wrote the book. Hmm. Yeah, I just had that up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It. No, I'll put it back. I was up. looking at. I didn't think you could out. read two things at once. So. <laughs> no, you know, I'm magical sometimes. Um, <laughs> not that magical though. Uh, yeah, yeah, I thank you for putting that out there, Alex. I'm very interested in reading more about this because I didn't even know he existed and he's got loads of books. Yeah, um, even I missed that one. So, yeah. Um, Tyler wants to know yeah. if Lovecraft was a type of Nostradamus and, for, and foreseeing. Do we think he actually foresaw what was coming, I guess? Sort of like what we touched yeah. on with the prophet him being a prophet i i kind of look at him like a little bit like orson wells you know 1984 yeah. it's like visionary of a different kind you know things to yeah, come because I think he, he was maybe perceiving and trying to describe things that they didn't really have the terminology to understand at that point in time well you wow. know what do you think i mean do you think he could have what allegedly when we sleep some people believe we travel or, you know, I mean, was he a contactee, abductee? Was he taking places to see all of this stuff? And he said, well, these were my dreams. But could he have been a traveler? Well, indeed. And um, that which then reopens the question about the um, whether the Necronomicon exists or not, just because love talks <laughs> always in a dream. Right, because right. Because there, there are elements of that in... Um, a number of um, the the dreams. Right. For instance, um, there's a very lengthy and extremely well written dream where he describes a past life as a um, a Roman proconsul and um, in um, pagan hill country and um, yeah, um, down here in the um, in southern Europe, which is extremely accurate. Right. And, um, we've also um, yeah with um, Hamilton, who's a um, yes. Hamilton Knight, who's a regular um, yeah, guest on the show. Yes. Uh, yeah, um, I was supposed to stay awake to watch you, but I'm guessing I just messaged you. I guess I'm guessing you're sleeping. <laughs> yeah, um, Hamilton's still uh, like myself under uh, fighting this um, crazy right. war of witches. So he's also right. last year, he was his place had just been hit by lightning. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. time round yesterday, he was trying to retrieve. Um, henry lincoln's library from here in the zone um get it back to the uk but the um the driver of the vehicle suddenly had a um a, 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 a um 
medical emergency negative um, reaction and um um, passed out at the wheel of the truck on the Please. freeway. So, yeah, uh, which um, again to me felt like an act of um, potential malicious uh -huh. it, it, it could only happen, you know, to him. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I razz him about stuff like this all the time. I'm like, only you, only well, that's you. Funny but, yeah. Um, nonetheless, we I got to say we've been going after um, sunken relia. Um, the um, city of Cthulhu, um, right. the sunken city that turns up in the different dreams. Uh, and, um, I, I, I got to say that there, there, there is stuff on the um, the seabed that, as far as I'm concerned, is extremely anomalous. So, which is um, we've got um, yeah um, sonar um, findings from the bottom of the ocean that match with. Um, satellite photographs um sourced from from elsewhere that um yes it's um pretty convincing that um these um these structures actually do exist just like um the um the details from lovecraft's yeah roman dreams so um wow. to, to what extent those things really are um really do exist is the as far as i'm concerned the door is open oh you you have more buried or underwater then you know there, there's a lot of history and a lot of culture that cannot easily be accessed or that you know the powers that be prevent you from accessing for various reasons so that's um, that does not surprise me hamilton i've actually yeah. touched on on a location like that it was just like mm, that's interesting and cycling back to uh, lovecraft as an abductee or um right. we will get back um, to shiva yeah, um, the Whisper in Darkness, one of Lovecraft's la um, later stories, um, really hits all the beats of a um, abductee, um, contactee um, um, story. Right. It, um, even has a man in black who um, sh who shows up knowing everything about the case, who picks the guy up from the station and um, there you got go. all of <laughs> which um, yes. would only come into common um, thoughts after um, the, the modern UFOs started to exist in like the 1940s and, and 1950s until um, long after um, Lovecraft was gone. Right. So yeah, there are discernible elements of, uh, of that contactee abductee scenario in the, in the text. Well, what's interesting is a lot of abductees or contactees now, according to, um, some testimonials will have apocalyptic dreams. So, you know, you're thinking some people believe that it's the future. Some people believe there's somewhere else. And other people believe it was the past that we, you know, civilization was brought here from this sort of a scenario from another place. Because, you know, when he, because some of the things he touches on is just, you know, it's just a lot of dark stuff. And they believe that, you know, there are places or even dimensionally that we're just living, you know, multiple or simultaneous existences. And, um, oh, sorry, Alex works. Here we go. Yeah, good night, Alex. Good night, Alex. Thanks for partaking. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, so I, I, I lean to that theory. That one seems really plausible to me. Uh, okay, we're gonna put this back up. Bubbles, can oh. you get that for the listeners? Yes, the ask Richard about egregores. Yeah, egregores. Egregores, thank you. <laughs> yeah. this, this is a new language for me. <laughs> okay, well, egregore is not very far off from the top. Okay. okay. Um, it, it's something that um, can kind of be um, dreamed or willed into existence, but yes. like a golem. Um, in its original sense, um, like a golem uh, type of thing. Yeah, well, I think in its original sense, the golem wasn't so much a clay man, but the egregore of the of the the, the the force of the Prague ghetto that had to manifest in some kind of form and then takes yes. form as the clay man created by Rabbi Ben Judah Lowe. Mm -hmm. uh, egregore is yeah something which is kind of mass dreamed in shape, uh, and um, to some extent. Um, yeah, Lovecraft's mythos is um, may may be demonstrating the the ability to uh, kind of dream itself into existence, but then um, 
there, there's there's another um, Lovecraftian slant on that because, of course, it could be the other way around. It could be that um, Cthulhu was dreaming us all along. Uh -huh. Wow, I like that twist. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I whether I'm dreaming Cthulhu I, or it's dreaming me. I like that. You get that one. Amelia. I can't even pronounce that first word. No. And Alex went to bed. No, Alex <laughs> <laughs> tap. <laughs> Opened a door uh, for him to see the future. That's what Alex was saying before. Nair, Nair. <laughs> uh, yeah. Can you uh, read that, Richard? <laughs> Is that no, a Lovecraft no, word? No, no, no. Oh, jeez. Like, it just rolls off your tongue. <laughs> it yeah. rolls off his tongue, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Avatar of Azathoth. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I still can't. I still can't. My brain can't wrap around that word. It's just wrong on so many levels. Yeah, uh, it's a tricky one. Uh, uh, it's yeah. one of the things I adore um, Lovecraft's alien characters for. Yes. You know, ah, love. that's what that is. One of they're, the they're meant to be um, unpronounceable. Yes, um, like Nakamun Lala Mom. Yeah, I am not pronounceable. <laughs> right, but, um, yeah, so. Sorry, I'm just like. <laughs> It's just I, think, so yeah. bad. I need um, time with it. That's something I didn't foresee when I was doing my research today was the enunciation of all of these, these names, you uh, know. But I like this. Um, his favorite book that he carried around was The Golem. Nice. And, yeah. you know, as we speak of Tulpas, there we go. So how did you, um, <clears throat> with, with, let's just talk about your film then. So you brought these two, obviously, you know, Lovecraft and definitely Lovecraft inspired. So what prompted you to want to do the film? Well, I, I think like um, most things in life, I probably had no choice. Oh. Um, <laughs> um, right. Simply um, a series of different um, forces, I guess, aligned in such a way that, uh, uh, yeah, that it eventually happened. Um, I, I could blame my mother for starting that process by she was a big HP Lovecraft fan and there we go. <laughs> got me to read the stories when I was young. So I first encountered um Colour Out of Space as a kid. So um I think I started um I, I first poked around the idea of adapting Colour Out of Space when I was about thirteen. Mm. Uh, um forgot wow. about it again for a, a bunch of years. Um and, um then um living down here in the Pyrenees, um, a bunch of different fairly Lovecraftian things happened over the years that reminded me of the of the stories. Um, oh, let me see. Um, Any want to share? Yeah, I'll just um, bits no. and bobs. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that was not really. Notably, um, yeah, the, um, there was a strong parallel to the Whisperer in Darkness, that aforementioned Lovecraft um, contactee abductee story. Where there's mm -hmm. a um, a place here called the Domaine de la Salles, which is an old house at the, the headwaters of the Salles River. It's a, a saline river that runs out of the hills behind Sugrain. And um, the former proprietor of the Domaine de la Salles, a man named Jean de Rigny, um, believed that there were um, ultra-dimensional um, extraterrestrial forces at work in the domain. I believe it. Moving I've been to the zone. I believe it. <laughs> the floor of his house um, in the nineteen, the um, it would have been the late nineteen eighties, early nineteen nineties. He produced a bunch of analog tape recordings of the sounds of that were underneath the um, the, yeah, the floor of his of his cottage, which he um eventually managed to play on um on French um television. And, um, which then, um, I guess, fed back through um, the conspiracy verse and ultimately through the internet to um, create a fully blown um, mass hysteria outbreak in um, in 2012, which um, went so far out of line that um, a state of um, martial law was declared in the area. The, the whole area was yeah, it was 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 locked down, which was yeah. I How guess, did I miss this? I was like a few years too late. I love that stuff. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. which fully reminded me of the old farmer um, convinced that there's um, alien ultra-dimensional things underneath his cottage and they're living inside the hill in um, Whisper of Darkness and the, the tape recordings that um, yeah the, the Akeley farmer character makes in, in Lovecraft story. So there were various um, elements mm -hmm. that happened out here that, um, that had caused to remind me of the, the original stories. And then... Um, that's pretty fascinating. Years ago, um, we shot a, um, a short film from a, a Clark Ashton Smith story, the, um, the Mother of Toads. And in the mm. course of that, I realized that uh, most of Smith's work was in public domain. Mm -hmm. uh, it then became clear that, um, well, if that's the case, what about Lovecraft? And we looked into the copyright on the Lovecraft stories and realized that um, pretty much everything was in um, public domain. And um, at that point in time, my immediate instinct was to write an, an, ad, ad, an adaptation of the Dunwich horror. I really wanted to do um, Dunwich. And um, the um, venture capitalist guy who was um, with us at the time in Montsegur said, no, you've got to do Color Out of Space. Uh, and I tried to kind of weasel out of it and say, well, no, how can you do that? It's like... Um, mm -hmm. how can you a color you can't see um, tried to back away from it but more and more people said no you've got to do color out of space so um eventually i um, sat down and yeah and so it was. Color was, out of space. were there any restrictions on your direction of the film or were you content with the way um, you brought it out to life I i'm pretty happy with the way it turned out actually the um i think the, clo the the closest transition from um page to screen of pretty much anything i've worked on it's um uh it it was a, a crazy thing because initially um i thought to try and shoot it in france and the initial script was in fact um set in france and then as it juggled around the world um trying to get it made it was like can you set it in canada so i rewrote it to set it in quebec and then wow. The suggestion that um oh we can get the money but it has to be in ireland can you rewrite it to set it in ireland and then somebody else said well heck we can do it but we can do it it has to be south africa uh, <laughs> so you're really uh, i'm tired of rewriting it to move it from one country to another and just went fuck it i'm going to set it in arkham <laughs> and, uh, and go back to the source story and, um, wherever we end up shooting it on planet earth we'll, we'll just have to make it look like like arkham massachusetts right. did a good right. job <laughs> yeah uh, it, it, it kind of reverted back to being closer maybe to the original story that it started off being butch right I'm so happy to hear that, you know, because sometimes when you speak to directors or producers, there's those, oh, I, I would have liked this or would have liked that. I love that, that you, you're you very happy with the outcome. It's going to make people who haven't seen it want to run to it even more now that they know that it's as authentic as it gets. We just got a nice endorsement a couple of days ago from John Carpenter as well, who nice. Um, owned That's nice. A Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um the fact that um Carpenter liked it and That's really a good yeah. kudos Huge compliment. right there. <laughs> yeah. It's um alpaca scene, I think, kind of fun. Oh, the alpaca thing was just killing me. I loved it. <laughs> 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 but I don't want to give away stuff. But yeah, I just we have an alpaca farm close to our house that we've been to. It's my daughter that I've gone with her. So it was just yeah. It was like strange, but loved it. Is what you're saying. Pardon? So, you like alpacas. Is I love saying. them. There they put go. them in little sweaters here in the winter. That's they're cute. so cute. <laughs> so Nicholas Cage, did you have to go to him? Did he come to you? Was he your first choice? Because P Nicolas Cage loves this sort of stuff. So to yeah. me, he's just like a natural. But, you know, because he's really into anything obscure. Yeah, I mean, um, it, again, I, I don't think that any of us necessarily had any choice. <laughs> it's like a, a series of uh, sorry, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> I like Nick Cage. That way, it was it was meant to be right. Nick was meant to be um, Nathan Gardner, and it just it it, it just happened. Right. Uh, I mean, a, a, a script came into his hands um, during the shooting of Mandy, 
Tom um, is a, something of a Lovecraft fan. Mm -hmm. uh, um, okay. Color is kind of a, a family movie, and uh, it's also, um, I think, a, um, a nice um, reach for Nick because he's playing a very um, a nondescript, uh, well-meaning family man. Yes. And, yeah, it's a very different. Yes. Thing. Like, uh, yeah, I don't think he's been given kudos for um, just, um, yeah, oh, uh, with a hippie past. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he, yeah. It's he did really well. Yeah, he's a he plays a weak man. He, um, he's got um, Nathan's got, got got his glasses. He's nervous. He's got poor hair. Uh, um, then as you, we go into it, we also see that he's utterly incapable of um, genuinely dealing with what's going on. And mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the, the real um, fear, hurt and incapacity on Nick's face at times is, yeah, he, uh, it's, a, it's very, a very long way from, um, yeah, um, Nick's um, normal From action. national treasure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, gone in 60 seconds, <laughs> leaving right. Las Vegas. Yeah, it's very, it's very different for him. That's what I love about him, though, is that he's not afraid to try anything because didn't he, he was in Pay the Ghost. Yeah, he was. That was an incredible film, too. And um, he did really well. That That's when you start to see him change his song. Uh, his characters. I love that he doesn't stick to a certain genre. He does he does take challenges all the time. And I'm impressed that he doesn't go by his family name so that mm. no one casts him simply because of who his uncle is. Right. So, yeah, I think I, I Nick and me were also a very good match in terms of um oh, I, I'm always under the opinion that on some level I'm shooting a uh, a, a very um, dark comedy. Mm -hmm. um, um, there, there, there's a level of uh, yeah um, black humor and in, um, yes. in, in the performance, which I think is is just on the uh, uh, on the right side of, of of camp for me, which I which I absolutely adore. Yeah, it's fantastic because it's very much like what parenting is like today you know our our generation of parenting is a little bit more relaxed than our parents generation and he portrayed that in the film he he portrayed that comfort yet i have to kind of discipline and you you see that back and forth he's incredible there were so many facets to all of the characters though mm. it was i love the camera work on some scenes i was just like wow and just we're at that yeah. point. We have to do a station and sponsor ID. Yes, Sorry. we do. And I yes, anyway, thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so nice things. Oh no, it, I watched it today, so I was really happy because I had to wait for it to come on. Um, anyways, we're going to go into why we can be here. You are listening to The Outer Realm with Michelle DeRoche and Amelia Pisano coming to you live from the beautiful city of New Orleans on 105.3 FM and 107.7 FM. We stream internationally as well. Tonight, we've got a returning guest and friend, Richard Stanley, with us, and we are discussing H.P. Lovecraft and his latest film that just did so well during lockdown. If you haven't seen it, Color of Outer Space with Nick Cage, you need to see it. An incredible, incredible film that if you're a Lovecraft fan, whether you are or not, you're going to love it. You're really going to enjoy it. Stream or listen to all of our archives on the platform you normally use. And we want to give a huge thanks to the amazing people at Folgers Coffee for fully sponsoring our show from day one. We love you and we thank you for your continued support. And a huge shout out and thank you for our intro and our outro to Dr. Snick, the sonic surgeon, Justin Snicker, award-winning composer and musician. You can find his music on Amazon and Bandcamp and find him on Facebook and Instagram where he's dropping clips of his music daily. And you can get a taste of all that great music. You know, there's a reason why he's won all those awards. He's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching us on social media right now, whether it's YouTube, Facebook, Wherever you're watching us from, Twitter or all the 200 streams that we have, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. There we go. And we are oh, back. We can breathe now. We are back. <laughs> so are you looking at doing any other like amazing Lovecraft films like maybe Cthulhu? I would love to see a Cthulhu film. That would be awesome. 
Well, that would be the intent, yeah. Um, uh, certainly, um, I'm very much um, hoping to um, continue to work in the um, the Lovecraft universe um, to um, to try and um, mount some um, some bigger adaptations. Right. Uh, that then comes down to um, whether that will be allowed in the um, the current ecology, which is um, comes back to the um, the running culture wars and um, the attempts to um, cancel even myself or the material or our cast oh. members. So, so um, yeah, um, sign of the times. I can't believe the control that is out there. Yes. So yeah, that does make it difficult as a, an author or a filmmaker, um, even yeah, yeah. any any sort of you know artist, singer. You have to be so careful now. I think gone are the times um, of free speech, so to speak. I think it's a lot more limited than oh. we thought. Do you, do you know what we got flagged on today on social media on Facebook uh, was one of our shows um, when we yeah. were up for the podcast awards in California. And we had to play the podcast award, um, you know, the Banner, little, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it was just like you know the little commercial that, yeah. Oh, the, award, the commercial, yes. They, they they basically said it was spam. <laughs> That's what show. it was. They I thought fought. they spammed <laughs> our promotion. I'm like protesting. I'm just clicking the button. Like, you guys are assholes. It's it's saying. ours. <laughs> I know. That belongs to us. How are we? What are we spamming? It's well, an it award show. Advertising for the podcast awards that we oh, didn't that's do. Oh, that's ridiculous. That network, it was a network advertising. Yeah. Of all the shows on the network that were that were put up for it. Do it every year. So, uh, yeah, and I saw that. I was like, <laughs> I was button clicking, and I was just ready to send some hate mail. I, you know, when <laughs> they when they put cold. out that so list of, of yeah, sorry, sorry. When they put out that list of books that they canceled, I went through my own personal library, saw what I had mm. and what I didn't have, and I went and purchased them before I loot. I can't get them, right? Because I couldn't believe the classics that they have canceled. And once the print is done, it's done. They're not printing them again. Yes, I'm like these were books that were on the curriculum of school for me for my English classes. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand any of it. I can't understand a lot of it because I don't live it. Mm -hmm. And I, and I respect that. I just, I just have a strong opinion that when it's something that's way back, you can't bring it forward. Focus on what's happening now. You know, yeah, and beyond that, it's just um, clearly something that needs to be resisted. Um, oh. with, yeah. Um, fought against with, yeah. Um, literally with guns and knives because, mm -hmm. um, in some respects, it, it's becoming a situation where we are being persecuted for our beliefs and for our cultural choices. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's just wrong on any level. And um, yeah. if uh, it's, it, it ain't right and it ain't fair, and it isn't also about social justice most of the time, because of what I'm seeing time and again is decisions are being made on at the back of lies and on the back of things which are, are being fully distorted, like this issue of are you prepared to cancel H.P. Lovecraft's work because it's, it's crammed with N-words? So it's mm -hmm. like a lot of works from then were though. It, it, yeah, yeah. You know, when it comes down to the yeah you know, the the name of the childhood cat, it's ridiculous. It's no yeah. proof that um, that mm -hmm. the guy or the fan base are are, are racists or white supremacists or anti semites mm -hmm. or anything else, and it, it needs to be fully resisted. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it cannot be cancelled. See, yeah. us, us Italians, we're strange. We see the mob movies and we support them. It's <laughs> 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 something that maybe we shouldn't, but we do. Uh, Richard um, is in uh, France, Chris. So I don't know if he would know this, but um, Amelia, do you want to get that? Uh, Richard, oh. does the UK have free speech? They're not as PC as we are here. That I do know. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know the extent of the um of the fear and paranoia in the in the UK. I, I suspect they're also pretty frightened. What about uh, your neck of the woods? In uh, in my neck of the woods, um, I, I guess um, folk care less, but we we, we haven't really got a um. A, a local film industry here, which is capable of turning right. out material and putting it into streaming, right. and 
of actually um, getting material into people's lounges or um, mm. getting access to the um, to the distribution platforms. Right. Um, mm -hmm. We're still essentially uh, uh, have to fight through the um, through the mm -hmm. culture wars, which means having to um, ultimately stand up for um, I think for what we believe in, because um, so long as we're um, saying oh well you know Lovecraft was maybe a terrible man and maybe those are the times he lived and it's um, we've got to separate the work from the artist. It's like no goddamn it. The, I, I do not believe the guy is a racist. I do not think any of the people who are or, um, his fans or reading that material have anything to be ashamed of and I, I, I think the reasons that we come to it is because of the the otherworldly spectrum that it offers and the, okay. the, sense of, the of deep time and the universe that it's in and I think we need to um, stand up for the things we like and mm -hmm. you yeah, for it and um, also demand that alternative points of view are, are represented in popular culture. Yeah, because that's some of the first things you find, like, you know, researching the, all the little yeah. ins and outs today, like the, the racist, that's why I said it. I'm just like, this is, was, is a very big belief system among many people. And that goes way back. Now it's even, it's even worse with, you know, I believe what we're, like you say, what we're allowed to say and not allowed to say. Uh, you know. it's, yeah, it's nuts on so many levels. I mean, we all know that those who don't learn from the mistakes of the past uh, are doomed to repeat them. That by uh, erasing um, the darkest parts of history doesn't, uh, you know, uh, put, leaves the way open for those things to happen again. Mm -hmm. Oh, history has a way of repeating itself. You know, history has repeated itself. How many times we go in cycles? Every generation has something repeating itself in one form or another. We don't seem to learn from our misgivings. You know, it just no. we, get, we get relaxed. Uh, I mean, I guess also yeah. um, another reason I'm pretty um, strident about um, yeah the, the the whole situation of cancel culture and the the Great Reset, apart from the um, fact that I'm imminently in danger of uh, <laughs> becoming uh, erased myself along with uh, pretty much everything that I love and adore right. is uh, the fact that I've been through this before. I lived in apartheid era South Africa where mm -hmm. um, there was complete censorship, a lot of religious censorship, um, mm -hmm. um, no pornography whatsoever and um, not even breast nudity. Um, I think some lingerie magazines was as far as it went. Um, mm -hmm. Um, pretty much everything banned. The, um, the Rocky Horror Picture Show banned. Um, David Cronenberg's Scanners banned. Joe Dante's The Howling banned. Ridiculous wow. movie. Um, wow. that were, cr cr were criminal. The Dawn of the Dead banned. Um, mm. um, so um, South Africa, full on censorship, very, very religious. And people Has went it changed? To yeah, it is very. Did it change off. after you've left? Yeah, so all, everything was decriminalized. Um, oh, okay. yeah, the fall of the apartheid regime, which was wonderful because you could drive through Cape Town and all of a sudden there was like no law and you were seeing yeah. on the first release all at the same time in cinemas Texas Chainsaw Massacre and I Spit on Your Grave and suddenly all these movies that hadn't right. been released were playing yeah. stream releases people were offering you offering you marijuana or lsd when you were trying to buy hot dogs and it was great for um, a short period of time right, <laughs> right. Yeah, they're still doing that in barbados by the way i was there just a few years ago yeah but, um my girlfriend is from south africa she was born and raised and then came as a young child because of what was happening there and they were a very wealthy family that even their servants were driving mercedes that's how well off they were and they came here completely poor start from mm -hmm. no because they had to leave everything behind uh, mm -hmm. times don't change but yeah the yeah. getting away from the point was that at that at that time in where under the apartheid regime when um we were all growing up under such incredible censorship that um, mm -hmm. none of us even knew that pornography existed until we got out of the country yeah. um, it's completely yeah um everything was completely airbrushed um at that point in time per capita to the white population we had like the world's highest rate of family slayings more husbands came home from work and killed their children and shot the dog and shot the tv set than any other country we had more one day pattern killings we had um, incredibly high murder rates south africa's probably still got one of the highest murder rates in the world um an incredibly high um amount of sexual violence mm -hmm. uh, 
um, domestic violence. Um, the, it, it did not lead to a kinder or gentler society. Right. A, a situation of total censorship and uh, where you cancel and, and keep away anything that might be disturbing people's heads exploding, mm. people turning to wolves, Tim Curry dressing up in ladies' underwear. Just <laughs> we uh, love uh, Tim Curry. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> don't get a, 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 a better, gentler, more egalitarian society. You get a nation of psychopaths. Right. I, yeah, I put. I made a comment about when Will Smith had smacked Chris Rock at the Oscars, and I called him a thug because anybody who gets up on a stage in a public place like that, that type of of um, event, mm -hmm. is a thug you're a bully. Mm -hmm. And I got called racist. And I, I'm like, I debated for three days if I should a comment. And all I wrote was, based on what you need to take a look at my family photo before you call me something like that, because I disagree with you. So mm -hmm. I'm racist, because yeah. I'm telling you that he's a thug. I'm Sign defending Chris times. Rock. Aren't they both the same color? Mm. So anyways, you guys need to chill out there over stuff like that, though. Seriously, it, I don't pay any attention to people who have no time but to comment on things and then walk away like nothing was ever said. We need to be accountable for our actions. That's what's missing today is accountability. OK, question, <laughs> Richard, what do you like about Lovecraft personally? Um, apart from the fact that he obviously loved his cat, which um, immediately endears me to him, um, I think he was a yeah a, a very quiet man, and um, his um, observations of the, um, the fantastical nature of the world around him um, often ring true to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and as a result, I've had lots of little Lovecraft moments throughout my life, which uh, <laughs> have made me think affectionately of him. Also, he clearly had a, a, a very hard time dealing with um, the modern world in any way at all. He, um, he did get married and tried to live in New York for a couple of years and just mm. was uh, horrifically miserable. Right. Um, um, yeah, I um, was forced to yeah retreat and try to get as far from the city as possible. I, I, I do feel sympathy for him. I, I think that's what a lot of people are trying to do now. I wonder how he'd fare up in, in this time, you know, um, the way society is. I mean, I have hope, you know, for for society. I do. I have hope that people will just stand up and go for what they believe in. Yeah, yeah that's, I think that's, that's, that's what we got to do at the end of the day is, uh, yeah. is stop apologizing and stop being uh, ashamed of um, of what we know we love. Uh, and that we mm -hmm. know in our hearts that we're not racists, we're not anti-Semites, mm -hmm. we're none of the things that we're being accused of. And mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it's with all of art and every, everything that humans create in music, um, there's yeah. always going to be a percentage of people who absolutely hate it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, if it's in any way is edgy, it's going to be most people are going to hate it. Um, mm -hmm. um, it, it we, mm -hmm. we can't, we can't um, not have um, those things exist because some people are going to hate it because that's, uh, yeah, fully, fully crazy. But I mean, that's, that's, that's what life is, though, you know. You, you just, we're not drones. We, we basically love some things. Other people don't love some things like Lovecraft. <laughs> love them or hate them. <laughs> you know, there's real people who really love him and people who just, who just don't, you know. They don't understand him. That's why. Well, exactly. But that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like you just have people who just, they just have their taste and they don't go out of their way to try yeah. to, to learn about it. And um, they, don't, they don't have to understand him. It, it, it's, yeah. it, it's an acquired taste. Yes, um, yes. exactly. Just, if they don't understand something, doesn't give them the right to no. um, genocidally exterminate it. No, exactly. but sci fi is an acquired taste, and you'll never hear me put down Star Wars, but I've never watched an episode either. Well, it's just like taking Same. down a historical yeah. statue. Just yeah, because you don't know. agree with the history doesn't make the history go away just because the statue isn't there. Now, you know, some people believe, well, you should never take it down. We, we just don't ever want history to repeat itself. It's a reminder of that. And other people say, well, yeah, but the statue represents a bad time, you know, in our history. And it, it's just a vicious circle. It's sort of, you know, it's sort of the way things are. It's human nature. Unfortunately, you know, 
but hopefully people grow from it. I think um, that, that started when they started covering cigarettes here in the stores. <clears throat> yeah. No, 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 out of sight, out of mind, but yet people are still smoking. I mean, mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, I'm still smoking. And if yeah. I can you know, cut to the chase do as they well. cover? Do they cover mm. them in your stores there in South of France, or are they in the open view? Um, in open view, but, okay. all, but there's no packaging. Everything is black. Uh, right. Okay. All, all, all the That's packets different. Black. Yeah. Uh, or, or, that, or, or black or decorated with photographs of the horrific things that smoking can do to you. Yes, oh, yes, on. here as well. Oh, it's here. Yeah. That it's really hard to find your tobacco mm. in the dark. <laughs> this is true. Cheval, uh, we'll I get quit to this three years question ago. and we'll get to Jim. Cheval asks, have you visited his grave? I certainly have, yes. And, um, yeah, I had a very good time in um, Providence and um, it was there a few years ago and um, managed to do it in time for a partial solar eclipse. So, um, Ooh, nice. yeah, um, I kind of very went nice. there to, um, just to make my piece before um, yeah, doing color and um, I was delighted at um, how much of Providence's fabric remains unchanged from Lovecraft's oh. time and how wow. it's still possible to um, That's really, cool. really That's um, take those same walks and sit in those same spots and um, mm. yeah, be right there. I love yeah. being in places where time stands still. Nothing really it's, changes. You all know. of Massachusetts is like that. The entire yeah, state. there's a grave in the, 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 the little 17th century graveyard in Providence where um, Lovecraft figured out Poe got he used to sit to write couplets, so he sought out the place where Edgar Allan Poe had sat to so go and sit there himself. And it's yeah, it's still there. Yeah, nice. there's tons I of statues it. of Edgar Allan Poe all over Boston. No, I love um, it. Yeah, Jim Gerard. Hi, Jim. The introductory video on the Richard Stanley website is totally awesome. Really captures the animated dream time. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Chris Phoenix says, if I ever get to France, I would totally <laughs> hang out with Richard. He's very cool. Well, ironically enough, Richard does tours. It can be yes, easy happen. Does. Yes, he yeah, does. I used to do that before the, um, yeah, this, this whole COVID thing came down. Yeah. Still, um, oh, that's wrong. But yeah, um, it, put a damper. Tourism business basically, um, yeah, crashed and burned over the last few years. Uh -huh. Well, hopefully, I, I have a friend who goes to, um, I believe he's probably met you because he's spoken about you, but he does tours. Uh, he lives in Texas, and then he goes to the south of France for a few months, and Beautiful. he's got his little niche in there, and people come from all over the world to sit and they'll do tours with him. I told Hamilton, I said, you guys should all like, collaborate because, like, you know, he still goes strong down there. So how long that'll last, <laughs> you know, because he didn't, he spent, he, you know, couldn't get to south of france when everything hit here so everything sort of went quiet and he he went back and had a quiet time in france and then the following year it was just like this past summer business as usual so yeah the course of life is semi-returning but it, it's it's been a freaky year for all of us so i mean it's been you know quasi love crafting i guess i mean yes. there have been a yes. couple of like in the the sort of more um, actively threatening part of the Ukraine conflict when they started oh, talking about so mm. around. There was that's... a point when all of the cell and Wi-Fi out here in these mountains went down for over 48 hours. Uh, wow. uh, during that time, um, there was a, a, a couple of hours when we were all thinking, hang on, is it, did a thermonuclear war just happen? Um, mm -hmm. Like, um, is the outside world still out there? And, um, it's had its mm. moments, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, mm, I just like to think this is something that's just going to go behind us. <laughs> so, wow. Um, she all <laughs> lived in one of his homes in Providence and it was haunted. Wow. Can you imagine being haunted by HP Lovecraft? I'd sit down and have a conversation with him, but you know. Oh, I'd me. start writing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, some more of that dream stuff. My God, man, it's just, I don't know. I love him. So, um, so uh, what do you have coming up? Because I know we're slowly nearing the end here. So what do you have coming up? I know that you and Hamilton are coming back on at the end of the month. So... You guys have obviously been collaborating. So can you elaborate a little bit on that? Just to 
get people all excited for the end of the month when you come on with Hamilton? Do you well, well, um, in Hamilton? <laughs> so, yes. Well, I'm here in the uh, in the Pyrenees where um yeah basically I'm still fighting a um a, a, a crazy ongoing um sorceress battle that oh. uh, I hope will um, eventually uh, fully resolve itself. But right. It, God's through a number of um, uh, of twists and turns. Um, what I can say is that yeah, I'm very much hoping to um, return to um, dramatic feature film production next year. But in the interim, um, a, um, a feature length um, documentation of um, the um, ongoing war here in the zone. Um, mm. So war against the witches um oh, due to crazy. land in the next um i'd say two to three months um and yeah the t current title is shadowland mm. uh, and shadowland should land with us um yeah before the end of winter which is a um i guess a, a one and a half to two hour um yeah mm real life um apocalyptic horror story about what's been going on here in the um the last two years and um i, I think it's going to be colorful I, <laughs> colorful i like that <laughs> yeah. we're, okay. we're still trying to get the um the, the goddamn um holy grail book out yes. and, um that's been um blocked by um a number of um crazy forces um one of them being the um, escalating um, cost of paper, thanks right. to the war in the Ukraine, which um, right. suddenly made it economically unviable to um, to do the print run. Oh, uh, um, Maybe so, you need to come yeah. to Canada to print. Yeah. yeah. So we have loads of forests. We supply the world with our lumber and our paper. True. Yeah, it's something that's hit a lot of folk, the um, sudden paper shortage, and um, everyone's been um, doing the same thing, which is like, oh, well, um, print is dead anyway. Why bother with, um, with printing? Uh, yeah, we don't have very right. much on paper here. Most things are emailed. Yeah. We but started I'm, that I'm, years ago. Ideas. I, I really want, okay, okay, I really want to see it as an actual book between yes. the two. Yes. I'm, I'm finding yeah. a lot of authors feel that way, and I think it's a little bit harder to snag too you know I when everything goes paper. digital it just seems to get copied and you know i have a friend who's had like four books plagiarized because he had them as um downloadable copies and that's also a part of the insane um drama that's been playing out here so we'll let that okay. we'll um um we get hamilton on the, the um the next episode but in the heart of it there's also a manuscript that has been plagiarized um which um stolen from um a dead man um from um tim wallace murphy who um yeah. died a to a bunch of folk in Esperanto. Yes. and um there is the matter of um tim's manuscript which um has been plagiarized um um, oh, wow. yeah, so, um, it's part of the crazy um, ongoing battle down here. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, he's wow. That's a shame. That is a shame. He's just another another genius. I just loved him. Um, wow, it sounds like you've got your hands full over there, and um, you and Hamilton are back on the 29th. I think the big question is going to be. Are we doing this live? I mean, you're good for live, but Hamilton, not so much. He doesn't I like know. staying I up. can't do during the day that day either. <laughs> I know. So we're going to have to talk to Hamilton. We'll have to bully you? him. I know. So Hamilton, if Richard could stay up, you're going to have to stay up and do a live show. So will, he be in, will he be in France with you, Richard, when you're... The end of the month? Yeah, 29th. Um, I don't know at this yeah. point. Time because um, it, it's really um, it's, crazy. It, it's, been, <laughs> it's between it's Christmas been, and New Year's. Day, crazy. I, I, I keep waiting for a for a quiet day. Right. But, um, but there's been um, some kind of um, yeah um, state of malady <laughs> running um, pretty much um, yeah every morning. <laughs> open up for us. Got uh, it. 
long as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. No problem. Yeah. Uh, we won't. Yeah, we won't hold you guys to anything. So don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're happy chaos. with what the late uh, um, works for me. Right. And we'll just bully Hamilton into staying awake. That's four against one. Or three against one. Right? Three I need against, sleep. She can't even count. One, two, three. Cold Amelia medication. Three. Cold medication. Yeah. With three. Yeah, oh yeah maybe I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with a, um, the Necronomicon story. Yes, please. Um, because um, I, I was always convinced that um, the Necronomicon was a fictional trope made up by Lovecraft or coming from one of his dreams. And, yes. Um, then... Um, a couple of times, um, first of all, um, I became aware that the Berlin University Library claims that it claims to have a copy, um, but then attempts to try to get the Berlin University Library to cough up their copy, um, then produced a, um, a, after searching for it, they um, claimed that they didn't have it anymore, that it had been lost in the war. And um, Brian Yusner, the producer of the Reanimator movies, went down the same path and also found that there's this record of the Berlin University Library having had a copy before um, World War II, which would seem very early for a Lovecraft hoax. Yes. Uh, uh, so there was that. And then, um, yeah, um, during the, uh, my, my travels, I um, fell into the company of a... Um, a Dutch um, smuggler who was um, who, had, who had smuggled a, a large amount of um, hashish back from um, Le <laughs> the Lebanon. Holy crap! To, um, <laughs> you know, fund one rinky dink terrorist movement or another, uh, and I asked him in the course of the conversation, "What was the weirdest thing that you ever smuggled?" And he told me that um, he had once had to carry back from. Um, Baalbek in the Bekar Valley, a, um, a, a book of black magic um, bound in human leather and written in human blood, uh, which he had to bring back to Europe for someone. And, um, the fun thing about the guy who was telling me the story was that he was dyslexic and mm. uh, boasted that he had never read a book in his life, um, that never heard of H.P. Lovecraft or, um, mm. or, or the Economic and uh, mm. that, that, uh, the, sa the same guy who was um, smuggling the drugs back from the um, the Bekar Valley was also smuggling a copy of the Necronomicon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. What surprises me is that Hamilton doesn't have one because Hamilton's got everything else. <laughs> well, maybe he's not telling us. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> of course, I'm just kidding. We yeah. did bring up a lovely copy of The Red Dragon the other day. Um, this wasn't on Hamilton's watch, but um, the Red Dragons are a notorious French grimoire, and um, a nice copy of that one um, surfaced in um, yeah, months ago, um, a couple of months ago. Oh, so um, the yeah, occasional um, yeah magic problems wow. do um, do wow. float to the surface sometimes. Definitely living on the wrong side of the world. <laughs> I'm so, good. I'm safe here. I love yeah. South of France. I, I love South of France. I do, I do too, but I don't want to get involved in all that. Other yeah, no, no, I can't wait to get back there. It's just beautiful. Not enough time to see everything, unfortunately. And clearly, I don't get to see all the cool things that are just, just all behind the scenes. So, um, wow. Thank you for, for joining us. And, and so are you had uh, a problem coming on. I just yeah. tend to wonder if it's, you know, why it was glitchy, You're just sitting in the background because you definitely didn't surface up until the point where we brought you on. So, because I sent you probably four or five different links, like, where are you? Yeah, so, I kept hitting on them and it kept taking me back into some kind of um, studio waiting room. Could, could you see us though? No, I couldn't see you. No, then yeah. you weren't in the then waiting you room. In, in, yeah, it's just Yeah, weird. you have to be able to, you if you see us, see us you're in a green room. <laughs> Yeah, you would see us, yeah. you would hear us, uh, and then up yeah, until... Yeah, I was me myself and um, say, saying you um, you will be admitted, um, you can be admitted on air at any time or something. Um, oh, God, that's oh, crazy. Maybe Just... you didn't enter studio. Oh, yeah, if you have to actually click the enter and then it brings you in. That's crazy. You were just in cyberspace somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, cyberspace. Some cyberspace I know. Chamber, <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> freaky, freaky stuff. But thank you uh, for coming on. It was just such a pleasure. Love having you 
join us and looking forward to having you and Hamilton on together. That's going to be a party right there. And I'll just <laughs> keep my mic on mute. Yeah, you take care of there and uh, thank you yeah. and you take you care. also thank and, you and good luck with with you know all the chaos that you're experiencing down there so um yeah. it's, uh, it's kind of symptomatic of what the whole world's going through but on some kind of um crazy um microcosmic level well let's hope you still have a great christmas regardless yes, yes. and this one is for you uh cc sends blessings to you <laughs> so i guess you'll know what that means <laughs> but thank you well, and i have will say is um yeah yay sulu we'll take that as a perfect exit <laughs> <laughs> Good night. thank you sleep well <laughs> hey, take care. Good, night, good night richard <laughs> or good morning <laughs> Well, that was that was awesome. I, I I just feel so bad that he had such a hard time getting on the soundboard because uh, we would have had an extra you know half hour of uh, Mr. Richard Stanley. But we'll save it for his his next time on. So guys, make a note of December 29th for Hamilton White and Richard Stanley together. So make sure you mark your calendars. But for now, we have come to the end of another fantastic segment right here on the Outer Realm. Big thank you, of course, to Richard Stanley for being a champion and staying up like until the crazy hours of the morning, because I'm sure it's going to be daylight over there by now. Uh, also, big thank you to Folgers Coffee. Big thank you to Dr. Snick, Justin Snicker. Uh, feel free to drop us a line if there's somebody you want to see on the show or if you want to have, see a certain topic matter. Just email us at the outer realm contact at gmail.com. Again, the outer realm contact at gmail.com or just go to our Facebook page and uh, click on the email button. Nice and easy. But wherever you are watching the show tonight, please, guys, just like us, subscribe, follow, whatever it takes. Just please do it. We appreciate um, your, your support. Now, next week, Wednesday right now is a mystery because we actually had, you can tell it's the time of year. People just have Christmassy things to do. Uh, we actually had to reschedule two shows. So Wednesday right now, um, we actually, I've got a couple of good, you know, emails out and um, I have a feeling we're going to get ahead on it, but, but we have a waiting list except for December. <laughs> so anyway, but I know some of you out there, Tamara, will be really happy about Thursday night. We're going to welcome back Dave Bennison um, to the show. We love Dave. He's a personal yeah. friend. And he does a lot of history stuff around the Niagara Falls region. And we're going to be doing a topic called Weird Niagara. We've had people come on and talk about, you know, Niagara Falls and a lot of the mysteries that surround it. Um, but Dave has just come up with research that... I had no idea. We were talking one day and I'm like, you're kidding. I've never heard of this. How is this a thing? So I said, you have to come back on and share this with everybody. It's just going to be fantastic. So that's going to be Thursday night. Um, I know, buddy Dave, there we go. So guys, we thank you and everybody in chat room. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you guys had uh, a good time. We had a good time. You guys make it that much better. So everyone... Behave yourselves. Have a fantastic weekend. If you're out, you know, just braving the wilds of the Christmas shopping, just be careful out there. It gets really crazy, especially on the roads. So good night.